What is up, doggies? It's your boy, Beanie Kowloon, and I am officially done messing around on the YouTube. No more messing around. We just copped a mic. You can hear me sounding crisp. In today's video, we're doing a fucking iceberg video. You know why? Iceberg videos, they pull views. I'm doing an iceberg on legendary, sad boy, lyrical, spiritual rapper, goat, Earl Sweatshirt. And before I start this iceberg, I want to give the hugest of shoutouts to Reddit user No Peroxide for making this entire iceberg and also describing what each layer means. I really cannot shout out this dude enough. Like, he essentially made this entire video. I mean, I was sitting at home with no ideas of what videos to make. I just spent like two months on my last one, got 20 views. You know, I had no ideas. And then I see this post on the Reddit with everything explained. This man is truly blessing. I mean, I also added more stuff I would like to specify. This isn't me just reading word for word what this guy wrote in his Reddit post. I find my own research, but this man was definitely a help. Let me leave it at that. Go check out his Reddit account. No peroxide. All right, without any further ado, let's get into this Earl Sweatshirt iceberg. Free Earl. Shortly after Earl joined Odd Future and dropping his debut mixtape Earl, he was seen as one of the most talented, exciting new artists on Odd Future and was gaining a lot of popularity. But once, you know, Odd Future, you know, started picking up a lot of popularity and started doing shows and interviews, Earl was nowhere to be found. And fans, they, they had no answer for where he was. The, the, the first answer they got for where Earl was at all was a post on the, the Odd Future's official Tumblr page just saying, Free Earl, leaving fans, you know, questioning what's going on. All they knew is Earl, he needs to be free. But later that week, on the official flyers for Odd Future's first hometown concert at Key Club in West Hollywood, Earl's name was crossed off with a brief explanation of will not be there due to mom. After this, the words free Earl became a popular thing for Earl Sweatshirt fans and Odd Future fans to just say online or in person or just, just something they would chant, you know, just, just a common phrase they would all use. Not only would Odd Future fans shout out Free Earl, but also members of Odd Future. Numerous different members of Odd Future in different songs would shout out Free Earl, most notably Tyler the Creator, who would shout it out multiple times. I'll do your wolf gang, golf wang, flawing off Free Earl mob. Uh, Free Earl, that's the fucking shit. And if you disagree, suck a couple pimple covered dicks. Um. All this Free Earl drama would actually give Earl a lot more publicity and gained him a lot of new fans. But meanwhile, all these fans, none of them knew where Earl was or when he was going to drop some more music. Earl had been gone since days after the release of his debut single, Earl. His mom had sent him to a several week wilderness camp to help him deal with his issues. If you're wondering what Earl's issues were, I mean, it's Earl Sweatshirt. He had a lot of them. Pretty fucking sad dude, you know? After Earl had returned from this wilderness camp, his mother realized his camp was not enough and that Earl needed far more time to, you know, battle his demons. So his mom sent him to Samoa where he would have more time to work on himself. Now at first, Earl Sweatshirt was very resentful of being sent to Samoa. I mean, he was on the brisk of becoming a famous rapper and now his mother, you know, sent him to Samoa where no one knew him and he had nothing really going on for him. But Earl would end up coming around to the program he was sent to in Samoa. Some different things I found Earl saying that he did in Samoa include... Earl would take courses talking to therapists, swam with the whales, earned a scuba diving license, watched every episode of The Mentalist, put his classmates onto Little B, and wrote rhymes. The rhymes that would actually end up being used on Oldie, which I mean, if you haven't heard, or heard Earl Sweatshirt's verse on Oldie, click off this video right now and check that out. I mean, that shit's some fucking heat, dog. Earl returned home from Samoa on December 1st, 2011, and he was brought home from none other than Tupac's manager, who would soon become his manager, but more on that later in the iceberg. Once Earl actually saw the Free Earl movement, he was actually vocally against it, as he saw it as a disrespect towards his mother, and he saw the people saying Free Earl as people just saying fuck Earl's mom for sending him away. Death Juice. In the music video for Earl, Earl Sweatshirt and other members of Odd Future mix up a bunch of random drugs into a blender and then proceed to just drink it all. This gets them all really fucked up and they hit the town, do some skateboarding and I mean they just fall over a bunch, start bleeding everywhere. It's a classic video. But yeah, apparently some fans would refer to the drink that they make as death juice. And also the explanation post from the guy who made this iceberg, he claims that some people would say that this juice would also make people's teeth fall out. 
I, I don't know about any of that. That just sounds like some creepy pasta to me. But I mean, if you know anything about that, drop your knowledge about that in the comments. Sounds kind of interesting. Chum. I mean, if you don't know what chum is, you should really ask yourself why you're watching an Earl Sweatshirt ice cream right now. East. If you don't know what East is, you should probably keep it that way. That song is garbage. But it is a fantastic meme. Phoebe. Earl Sweatshirt's real name is Phoebe. I'm not even going to attempt his last name. I, I looked up the pronunciation and I mean, just look at this shit. I imagine trying to say that. Earl Wolf. This is an album name of a collab album that Tyler the Creator and Earl Sweatshirt were working on that never came out. And also the tour name of a tour that they went on in like 2013. Earl's father, famous poet. I mean, this one's exactly how it sounds. Earl Sweatshirt's father is a famous South African poet and activist. Sly Tendencies. Sly Tendencies was the original rapper name that Earl Sweatshirt went under. He only dropped one album or mixtape under this name known as Kitchen Culture Leaves. And also Tyler the Creator would end up discovering Earl as Sly Tendency and recruiting him to Odd Future. Kitchen Culture Leaves. This is the name of Earl Sweatshirt's first mixtape ever when he was still under the name Sly Tendencies. At the time of making this mixtape, Earl Sweatshirt was only 14 years old and I mean you can still check out what's left of this mixtape. There's a re-uploaded version on YouTube. And I mean, it's pretty heat. I mean, it's not as good as he is today, but you can definitely see that this man was next up. G Herbo Feature. This is referring to the song Knuckleheads featuring Earl Sweatshirt and G Herbo. Most people may not know about this song because I do not believe it's on either Apple Music or Spotify, but you can check it out on YouTube and I mean, the song bangs. It's, I mean, it's G Herbo and Earl Sweatshirt. What else would you expect? Important underscore man 464. This is the name of one of Earl Sweatshirt's throwaway SoundCloud accounts that had five songs on it. The most notable songs to come from this account is Winded My Sales and Quest Slash Power, which if you haven't heard these songs, those are some top tier unreleased Earl songs. Random Black Dude. This is the pseudonym that Earl Sweatshirt uses for his production credits. I'm not sure why, but he does. Darkness. This was another alternate account that Earl Sweatshirt had, but this time on YouTube and he would end up dropping his mixtape Soulless on this. This mixtape would get high acclaim from the fans who heard it as they saw it as one of Earl's most sad and depressing albums yet. But not only did Earl drop Soulless on this account, he dropped two other videos, including this one. Darkness, 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 darkness. Hawks Water Boys. This is the duo name Earl Sweatshirt and Knack had together before Earl was ever even Earl Sweatshirt and was still slide tendencies. Shoe Nice. In the song Quest Slash Power, Earl makes a reference to legendary YouTuber Shoe Nice. They overheard he shoe nice, so they knew to surround him. He shit like he shoe nice, like the booth had a bounty. If you don't know who Shoe Nice is, aka the human vacuum, this is an OG YouTube legend who would basically just chug slam vodka bottles eat pencils, and glue steaks, and chalk, and much, much more. Alright, we're starting to get into some of the lower depths of this iceberg. Tyler Craven. Tyler Craven went to Coral Reef Academy in Samoa with Earl Sweatshirt. Once he returned home, he would end up doing an interview with Complex, talking about the times he had with Earl. In this interview, he describes how him and Earl became friends, and I quote, me and Thebe got close because we were able to share jokes very differently than he could share jokes with the rest of the students. I understood his sense of humor very well, and he understood mine. We just had the same kind of humor. We actually talked about making some videos like some mad TV type shit on YouTube together when he was back. I don't know if he'll have time when he gets back now. Also, when asked what kind of person Earl Sweatshirt was, his response was, and I quote, Everyone loved Phoebe. He's hilarious because he has a way with words, just like his music. He's quick with it too. He would just outdo everyone in being funny. People would follow him. He was a leader. Throughout this interview, Tyler Craven only says positive things about Earl Sweatshirt, but Earl Sweatshirt was still not a fan of this interview. And understandably so, Earl Sweatshirt did not want everyone knowing about the whole Samoa situation. He wanted to keep that a private thing between him and his mother. 
So any information and articles written about it, he was not a fan of. Old Sweatshirt also talks about his opinions on this on his most popular song, Chum. Craving and he's complex, fuck niggas that track me down. Fuck Samoa mixtape. This was a mixtape made by the fans when they found out Earl Sweatshirt was in Samoa. Nothing really too notable, it, it was just a compilation of Earl Sweatshirt tracks posted onto YouTube and Datpiff. Earl Sweatshirt has the same manager that Tupac did. Lila Steinberg was Tupac's manager, but was also known to have been a mentor towards Tupac and helping him through troubling times in his youth. And well, some way or another, Earl Sweatshirt's mom and Lila Steinberg had connections. Earl's mom and Leela Steinberg would end up meeting up and discussing what they were going to do with Earl Sweatshirt and how they could help him. It would be Lila Steinberg who would actually push to bring home Earl Sweatshirt, and she would end up going to Samoa to shoot a documentary about what Earl was going through in Samoa. After this documentary, she would bring Earl Sweatshirt back home, becoming his manager and also his mentor like she was to Tupac. Frank on Pre. Frank Ocean was originally on the song Pre by Earl Sweatshirt instead of SK La Flair. The original song got leaked in 2019 going up for sale for $300 with a snippet on YouTube posted for proof. At this time, the Earl community tried to raise the $300 to get this song. But before the Earl community could raise the $300, it was bought by an anonymous person outside of the community. And while no one knows who this man is, and he hasn't posted this song anywhere on the internet, so the song is gone now. Pretty sad story to think that the Earl Sweatshirt community couldn't raise even $300. Like, that's not that much money, dog. <laughs> I don't like shit, I don't go outside, roll out, fuck up. Reddit user No Peroxide, the same guy who made this iceberg, has a great post explaining this entire thing. So I'm just gonna quote that word for word. About a week before the release of I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside, the video for the single Grief was supposed to, to supposedly drop on Earl's website with only the title of the album at the end of the video as a low-key way of announcing the album. The label showed Earl a preview of how the website would launch and it was flooded with promotion for the album. Earl didn't want it to be too in your face, so he said to remove all the promo, just keep the video. Later, people started tagging Earl on Twitter about the album, and Earl checked the website to see that all of the promotion was still there, and the video wasn't. They also include the cover art, album covers, length of the album, and the songs, release dates, features, everything except the video. They did exact opposite of what Earl asked. Earl felt like they weren't treating the album seriously and felt disrespected. He proceeded to air out Sony on Twitter, this is where the relationship between Earl and Sony started to go downhill even more. Backpackers. This is one of the rap groups Earl Sweatshirt joined when he was first starting off and he was still known as Sly Tendencies. Kendrick Lamar's favorite rapper. In 2015 on Twitter, when Kendrick Lamar was asked who his favorite rapper was in the game right now, he replied with Earl Sweatshirt. I never knew about these tweets, but I mean, it makes sense. Greatness recognizes greatness. Some rap songs heroin theory. Some people believe some rap songs is actually about Earl using heroin. I found this post, you know, showing a couple different pieces of evidence explaining why why you might believe this, but I mean, I think this theory is some nonsense personally, so I mean, I'm not even going to read it. If you want to read it, pause the video and read it right now. Genosis. Earl Sweatshirt tweeted out in 2012 that he wanted the name of his third project to be Genosis. This of course ended up being changed to I don't like shit, I don't go outside. And the word genosis, if I'm even saying that correctly, I doubt I am. I looked it up and I, I couldn't find any meaning for it. A the most I could find it was like the name of a character in Winnie the Pooh, which I doubt that's why Earl would wanted to name it genosis. Clayman Clutcher. These dudes, Earl Sweatshirt and The Alchemist, created a whole entire album and dropped it on YouTube under a random name, random thumbnails, just didn't tell anyone about it, and no one's found it. And while well, we know the album's out there somewhere because The Alchemist tweeted out that he did this. And well, obviously Earl Sweatshirt and Alchemist fans started searching for this album because, well, I mean, have you heard an Earl Sweatshirt Alchemist song? They're truly magical. It honestly hurts to think that there's an entire album out there that, that we just can't find. And while well, on the search for this album, people took noticeable interest in YouTube account Clayman Clutcher thinking this may be one of Earl Sweatshirt's alt accounts as he's had many in the past, but it would appear this account is just some random dude as, I mean, even in the description of his most recent video on October 10th, 2021, it says way better than that Earl guy. And also the fact that this YouTube account never actually got us anywhere closer to finding this hidden album, so... Blog post. Before Earl was in Odd Future and was still known as Sly Tendencies, 
He would often make blog posts talking about his rapping, rappers, and albums he enjoys, and really just whatever was on his mind. Some highlights I found from his old blog posts include, I'm not a happy person. I don't like a lot of people. But people say I'm funny, so go figure. My mom is a lesbian. I don't know why I included that. I plan to drop a mixtape sometime in the near future. Kitchen Cutterly V1. So I recently reunited with the little homie Sage. This young little fella is a beast. Dude is like 12 years old doing frontside heels and shit. Last weekend was fucking hectic. It started out with the homie Richard's birthday celebration at none other than Roscoe's. I made a conscious decision to not eat anything for like 6 hours before we went, just so the food would taste that much better. I got there a bit late and had to fucking wait for a waiter while everybody else was munching on their waffles and chicken, pissing me off. So then I just decided to come up on the homie Phoenix chicken G code. Anyways, I got my food and started golfing it down in a real beast like manner. <laughs> Surprisingly this story only gets better but it's just far too long to read the whole thing. If you want to see this full story along with his other blog posts that have been saved, check the link in the description. Larzy Parzy. Larzy Parzy was a childhood friend of Earl Sweatshirt and did multiple reddit AMAs talking about what it was like growing up with Earl Sweatshirt. Earl jerked his dog's cock off. Yeah, you heard me correctly. In one of the AMAs that the reddit user Larzy Parzy posted about growing up with Earl Sweatshirt, when a person asked what kind of person he was, Larzy Parzy responds back with a story about how Earl Sweatshirt used to give his dog a red rocket after seeing it in South Park, and then obviously the follow up question was, Earl jerked his dog off? And well, Larzy Parzy responds, Yeah, like he knew what jerking off was, he just thought it was funny. We were pretty fucking weird. Edit. To clarify, he thought the South Park episode was funny, and thus he thought saying Red Rocket and doing that was funny, and it's not like it was a pastime of his or some shit. We were 10 and he did it once because he thought it was funny at the time. Larzy Parzy would end up deleting the comments that he made about Earl jerking off his dog, but not before some people got some screenshots of it, and I mean the fact that he deleted it, I mean it only further proves that Earl definitely jerked off his dog. I mean the dude was like 10, but still pretty funny. April 14th, 2011 Shattered Dreams Incident Alright, from what I found in the reddit comments on this iceberg for what this means in the post was this was the day that he went to Samoa, implying that his dreams to continue a normal rap career was shattered, even though he rapped after that. And well there you have it, the complete Earl Sweatshirt Iceberg. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing, you know, shit's not very hard to do it. I mean like, when I see, you know, I get likes and subscribers, it makes me fucking happy. And I mean, come on dude, you, you don't want to make me happy? Come on, come on man, drop a like, hit the subscribe button. Alright, well, I mean, that's all I got, so until next time.